So I just finished filming a what sold in less than 30 days video and I figured I would film another video just to encourage other mothers who stay home with their children and uh, also either do create an income from home or would like to. And so this is just an encouraging video on how we can stay on track and continue to make money or work towards making money while still having our little children at home with us. So if you don't know, I am a stay-at-home mom of two girls. I do stay home full-time with them and homeschool as well. So they are with me all day, every day, 24-7 pretty much. While that comes with its challenges, I do thoroughly enjoy it and uh, I do feel very blessed to be able to do that. But also, I'm someone who was very used to being a full-time working person since the age of 16. So when I came to work from home, when I came home to stay with the girls, I still found ways to make money and have created plenty of side hustles, which I'll actually share in the future um, on this channel, different ways to just make money while staying home with them. Some make more money than others and some require more time than others. It just depends. But uh, mainly the ones that I do right now are uh, reselling online, creating digital products, and there are a few other ones that I do, but those are the main ones that I'm focusing on at this time in my life. <laughs> also, please excuse my voice. I'm getting over being sick, so I sound a little deep and raspy. <laughs> so that's a little bit of my background, um, and just to be clear, I've been home with my kids now for five years. So why I wanted to make this video was just to share some information with you on how I managed to balance everything and get it all done um, which is just a blanket statement because work-life balance does not exist so just know that so don't feel like you're alone and thinking you can't figure it all out but there are some things you can do that can help you a lot with getting everything done and once again I'm coming from the perspective of a married woman who stays home so if some of these things don't fit your lifestyle then understand that that's just where I'm coming from but you would just need to tailor it to fit your needs. So something that's very important, the first thing I want to bring up is uh, routines. You don't have to be like a stickler for time, that's not what I mean. It's not like you have to be like, get up at this time, do this at this time, you know, it's not that rigid. But like rhythms and flows to the day are very important in order for you to have a functioning household for you to get work done and to be able to meet the needs of your children, especially if you're someone like me who homeschools. So not only do I take care of them, but I'm also responsible for their education. So with that being said, there are things that I have in place. Uh, flow and rhythm wise so that they know what's coming and we have a general understanding with each other on what's going to get done. So for instance, my day can start at various times. I'm not going to lie. It's not like I get up at a set time every day, but it is not uncommon for me to be up at 4 35 o'clock in the morning starting my day. But if I want to sleep in, then I sleep in. So don't think you have to do anything that I'm saying. Um, but that's usually when I'll get up and I'll do one of two things that will be either um, beginning begin getting ready for the day like shower do makeup if I want to or hair if I want to most days I don't and then start my day or I'll just dive right into work especially if I know there's a lot going on that day and I just need to get things taken care of then I'll just dive straight into work and then I have a good solid three hours at that point before my girls wake up um, they usually wake up like 7 30 or later so I, I have a good amount of hours to get some things done. And my personal goal is to always hit at least four hours a day of work. So that knocks out a good amount of that time for me personally. And then once they're up, they understand that we do our morning routines, right? We're gonna do breakfast to get ready for the day, take care of some chores, get some homeschooling done. Then by that point, we're moving into lunchtime. And then after that, when their homeschooling is done, they get to play freely in my care, supervised while I'm working. So I, the type of work I do is something where it's flexible for me to be, have them around and I don't have to worry about um, them being in like a camera for work or like someone hearing them on phone calls. So the work I do allows them to just be themselves and play alongside me as I work. Um, even right now, they're not right here with me in this moment, but they're in their room. I can hear them right now as they're talking close by. They're old enough to watch themselves. They're five and eight. And so they will, you know, be there with me while I'm working. And our day continues from there with our regular flow of like dinner, if we're going to the gym, anything like that. I'll try not to talk too long on each point. <laughs> Another thing that can be difficult is setting boundaries, but it is very important. And that is because in order for you to work efficiently, you need to be able to set boundaries. Uh, it's very hard to multitask all of the op things at the same time. And sometimes as a work from home parent, you don't have no choice but to do that. But setting clear boundaries uh, will definitely help. And that's setting boundaries with more than just your kids. 
So you can set boundaries for yourself too. So uh, if you're someone who knows that you just cannot work and be a parent at the same time, some people get mood swings trying to handle both. Some people uh, find themselves extremely stressed out. Whatever it is, um, set those boundaries for yourself. So can you handle working with your kids alongside you like I can or can you not? And it's okay if you can't. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I have to make a call and decide what I'm going to do in that moment. But I have that clear boundary with myself where I say, you know, like these are the hours I'm going to work each day. I am flexible on them so that part is nice but this is what I need to meet every day in order to meet my own personal goals. Um, but also if it's a day where there's just a lot more demand from the kids whether they're sick or they have emotional needs more than usual whatever it may be. Sometimes I understand that the boundary is work has to take the back burner just a little bit in order for me to meet their needs. But once again, I am in a situation where I am very blessed to have uh, another spouse who provides for us as well. He, we, we depend on his income, not mine. So I have that availability, but depending on your own needs and what you need to do, you know, set those boundaries for you. And that goes for spouses as well and having clear communication. So boundaries and clear communication with a spouse is very important or significant other whatever you would like to call it. And that does require a healthy relationship. That's something that needs to be touched on on this because a lot of times people will tell me when I say this, like say setting those boundaries with your spouse and I'll explain in a minute, um, people will say things like, well, he just doesn't get it. He thinks that I'm the stay home parent and I should just be with them all the time or whatever it is that they might say. Well, that sounds like there's a communication problem going on and that you guys need to work something out. Um, I'm not saying that that's a healthy or unhealthy marriage, but it might be a symptom of an unhealthy situation in the marriage that needs addressed. So having clear boundaries and communication with your spouse are important too, to say, hey, I know you work nine to five, but when you're off work, I really need this, this evening time to be my time as on work, even though I'm working from home, uh, in order for me to provide for us as well, you know, or something along the lines of that. So make sure you're working with your spouse. Do you need them to um, maybe take your kids out of the, ho the house for a little bit for you to get work done? Anything like that. Those are things that you need to clearly communicate and set boundaries on. So the spouse is obviously two in one. It's communication and boundaries. Um, and then same with your children. Children need to understand like, hey, this is mom's time to work right now. Sometimes it's hard for them to understand, especially when you work from home. And because I do it as flexibly as I want, so it looks like I do whatever I want. And so for an example, I also do some freelance video editing. And when I do this work, they tend to think they can just interrupt me, uh, even though I'm technically on the clock. I do this, per it's an hourly wage that I work when I do these video editing jobs. And so I'm like, hey, mommy can't stop right now and cook you chicken nuggets when you have a parent over there perfectly available go try them you know so you have to communicate those clear boundaries um, and I even tell them that I'm working with my boss right now even though I technically don't have a boss <laughs> because those are things that let them know like oh okay she's serious it's work time so just think about those kind of boundaries that you would need to set another thing is delegating tasks and this is one that can also be difficult <laughs> for some families and once again this is something where maybe there are some things you need to work out in your marriage communication wise in order to have these needs met but if you are not the um we won't even get into my own opinions of this topic but in general if both par both parents are working right if, if your significant other is working and you're working even though yours is more laid back like how mine is because i'm technically my own boss and he my husband works a nine to five we still need to delegate household tasks and other things that need done. I cannot work and take care of the kids and homeschool and clean the entire house and run all the doctor appointments and run them to all their extracurriculars. Like these are things that need to be delegated out. So there needs to be clear communication once again and uh, working that out with each other like, hey, you know, I also work. I want to provide more income for us. I want to provide more opportunity for us. But in order for me to do that, I need these tasks to be delegated out between us. So how about you take on um, dishwashing and I take on laundry this week. Next week we can look at if we need to switch it up. You know, whatever that looks like. Make sure that you're delegating tasks. Something that helps a lot with this is doing weekly meetings with your significant other uh, in order to touch a basis on everything. So in those meetings we go over anything from our schedule coming up, our budget and where we um, need to be with it or you know like just things that we're struggling with and we need help from one another all those things get touched on in a weekly meeting that we have to make sure that we are on the same page another thing you can do uh, is include your children 
Yeah, it can be include your family even. Uh, my husband even helps. So you can find ways to include your children so that they feel like they have a role in your job and then they also take it more seriously and they um, are more inviting to you working, right? Sometimes it's hard for kids to accept that uh, mommy needs to work right now and can't give you her full attention. I have one that's like that, my youngest, just wants me 24-7. And so with me including her, she feels like she has an important role to play and understands the work more. So she's more willing for me to um, be able to work without stopping a million times to help her or meet her needs. So what I mean by that is uh, I find age appropriate tasks for them. And so my oldest is eight. When we go sourcing, she goes with me. Sourcing is where we're going out to find products to sell. And my youngest is the impatient younger sister. So one thing that she can help me within my work is to help entertain her sister and keep her busy so that I have enough time to source products to sell. And with doing that, I do pay her. It's not a lot of money, but you know, at eight years old, a little bit of money goes a long way. <laughs> Another thing is helping me with shipping. So when it's time to ship out things, they can help me get the things packaged up, uh, get the labels ready, stick them on the packages, take them to the post office, scan them. They can do all of that. They can also help me um, package things away and put the put the products away to be stored until they're purchased. There's a lot of steps that they can do. So just think of ways that, and that's for my personal type of side hustle, you just have to think of how it'll fit yours. But you can definitely find ways to have either your whole family, including your significant other, um, or just your kids help you out and make it a family affair. Does it slow things down? Yes. But... It gives them more appreciation for what I do, which in return gives me more time to do what I need without being interrupted. Another important thing is staying organized, and this can be done through a lot of things, but the main thing I wanna say is doing a top three list. And what that is, is maybe I'll go in a future video like more in depth, maybe. Um, it, it's making a list of your top priorities of, of the day, but I do specific ones. So I have one for work, one for home, and one for homeschool. So those are my top three tasks that I have to get done that day. And uh, once those are done, we can look at the other tasks that need to be done with the, with a like to-do list or whatever. Another way to stay organized, I'd grab this from under the camera, is you could do spreadsheets that help you meet your goals um, to stay on track. And so this one is a sourcing list right here. Every time I, I, have, to, I have to source 189 items this month, every time I source one, I get to fill this in and you know, each rectangle represents an item needing sourced. So that's another way to stay organized. Same thing, it's another spreadsheet that tracks another thing that I'm doing this as daily goals and how many of the listings I did, things like that. So you just need to find ways to get organized that work for you, whether that's visuals, um, doing a top three priority list, like I said, making a to-do list, um, penciling everything in, it doesn't matter. Reverse, reverse scheduling is another one people like to do. Um, it's just important to stay organized and on top of it, Otherwise, you, it gets chaotic and crazy and hard to manage. And like I said earlier, this is like a sub one that I keep mentioning repeatedly, is to be flexible. When you're a stay-at-home parent, your main priority is the child. So work often has to be flexible. It is what it is. Um, maybe as they get older, it gets easier. I, don't, I haven't hit those teenage years. I'm sure at that point it gets easier. But as far as right now, being flexible is the key component to getting things done and giving myself grace and understanding that like, I mind, I meet my goal every day. We can try again tomorrow, tomorrow's a new day. Um, but flexibility is really important and giving yourself the grace to be flexible. That's not the same as um, like being, how do I wanna say, I don't wanna say being lazy, but like procrastinating, right? That's not the same as procrastinating. Don't tell yourself, well, I kinda of worked today. I feel like I can just take tomorrow off. If you were supposed to work tomorrow too, then get it done. It is what it is. Self-discipline and being flexible, those two, have to be hand in hand or else you'll kind of like procrastinate and fall back some so make sure that you are being self-disciplined to still finish the work but being flexible to move it around as needed and lastly i want to say uh self-care is still really important okay so don't forget to take care of yourself on top of everything if you're not healthy here and physically and all the things then um you know what you're just not operating to your full capacity and that's not good for anyone not for you not for your spouse not for your, your friends your kids for anybody okay so make sure that even though you're making room for the homeschooling and the taking care of your kids and the cleaning the house and doing the work from home stuff um, make sure that you're still scheduling in time for proper meals rest right sleep is very very important making time for the gym right movement body movement and all those kind of things so make sure that you're making time 
for you. That one's a controversial one. I know some people think like self care is bad, <laughs> but it's not uh, in my personal opinion. So those are the things that I wanted to leave you with today. And if you're interested in learning more about the side hustles that I do, over here's a video where I share with you things that I have recently sold to give you an idea of what I do. You can check that one out and see more about it. And I'll see you over there in that video.